We're all doomed. The planet's going to hell in a handcart. We keep getting told that global warming is unstoppable, and we might just as well put a bag over our heads and give up now. Asia has to take more than its fair share of stick when it comes to greenhouse gases. It's come late to the industrialization party, but since it arrived, it's been hogging the dance floor and eating all the dips. That's because Asia has become the world's factory, and that means loads more emissions. But as a continent that's changing faster than you can blink, it's also the natural home for a special group of people who aren't tied down by conventional thinking. They're scientists and activists, movers and shakers, and they're coming up with some unexpected, even crazy solutions to the problems we all face. Asia is the world's most populous continent, and there's a massive movement to the cities, many of which have been thrown up in haste and are more rough and ready machines to live in than harmonious homes. Cities are the sinkholes where we churn out greenhouse gases. They eat up the planet's resources and encourage us in our profligate ways. So the changemakers are out to make these places work for us and for our planet too. They're coming up with better ways of living, providing us with gadgets, and ways to do without gadgets, bringing light to dark villages, and warmth to our homes, transforming our offices, and turning our cities into gardens. They're about to change the way we live. Coming up, a flood in the basement and a hole in the roof. Some glass that's really hard to see through. And a man being bossed around by a computer. Most people in Asia and across the world live in crowded cities. So rather than building from scratch, some change makers are looking at the materials we build with. A rooftop in Taipei. This is the site of Professor Chin Huai Young's most important experiments, ones that he hopes will save an endangered species. The steel and glass skyscraper. Tall buildings are the hallmark of Asia, but in the tropical regions, under the steady burn of the sun, they're like hothouses inside another very big hothouse. In other words, they're really, really hot. And the only way to make them more comfortable is by expending masses of energy, mostly in the form of air conditioning. While the obvious answer to this problem with skyscrapers would be, well, not to build them in the first place. At the rate that Asia's urbanizing, there's not a lot else you can do. Professor Young's research is devoted to making life inside these glass buildings more energy efficient. So here on the roof of Taiwan's University of Science and Technology, he's built some little houses. Not that they look very like skyscrapers. The walls are insulated almost perfectly to allow the actual test material to be put through its paces. The ordinary house features normal window glass for comparison. But the special house boasts Professor Young's so-called miracle glass. Down in the lab, we can see that the glass is a thick, multi-layered cluster thingy. Looks complicated and clever. This wall Go on. 我從2003年開始做到現在,大概有4年的時間把這個發展出來。So what exactly does it do? 這個玻璃呢,它最外層就是這邊最外層,它有一個奈米光觸媒圖層,就是剛剛各位看到有自己的功能。然後接下來呢就是有一個導電玻璃,我們把會進去的薄膜呢把它spotting上去,所以呢只
啊，它就会产生电。然后中间呢，我们再有一个空气层，空气层主要就是说，哦，就是把那个一些热量呢，把它隔解。To put it another way, there are three layers. The first is the insulating vacuum. Combined with tinting, it blocks out up to 90% of infrared radiation, or the sun's heat. 那各位可以看到，这个用在采光道有一个好处，就比较不会那么刺眼，而且站在下面觉得很凉快。所以我们房子里面就不需要开冷气空调。The next layer is a see-through silicon film that generates electricity. Effectively, it's turning all your windows into a power source. 这个是模拟太阳。啊，你说没有太阳的时候，哎，这个灯就会熄掉、啊。太阳一出来，啊，这个电力就来，啊，灯就会点燃。Finally, for the lazier amongst us, a further bonus: the glass actually cleans itself. 这光电板的表面就不会卡脏东西，因为这个脏东西会影响到发电效率。等到灰尘都卡住光电板的话，阳光一照下来，就被这个灰尘挡住。On the right, normal glass. The water forms droplets that stick. On the left, miracle glass. A thin layer of titanium dioxide actually breaks down dirt. The rainwater spreads evenly across the surface and carries off the loosened dirt, not even leaving a smear. Of course, there's a snag. This stuff is going to be expensive. Currently, a one square meter concrete block with a miracle glass panel in it would set you back 600 US dollars. That would come to a pretty hefty bill over a mega skyscraper like Taipei 101. The professor is hoping to cut the cost by up to two thirds, at which point it'll become competitive with other building materials. Until the glass becomes more affordable, though, there are only plans for demonstration buildings. One of these is to be a temple. This is the only temple in the world to use glass to build a temple. That is, a glass temple. 所以用在它的屋顶来讲呢，它就可以产生电力啊，供应里面的电需求，而且可以把温度大幅下降。另外来讲，就是说，如果用传统的那种玻璃很刺眼，那我们这个刚好是不会那么刺眼，所以刚好很适合用在他们的屋顶。Fancy technological glass may not actually bring you any closer to heaven, but Professor Young hopes at least it'll make our lives on Earth a little greener. 所以我这个玻璃的花名，让地球融化的问题解决，哦，然后让冰冰冰山不会溶解那么快，然后让一些比较海平面比较低的国家不会受到影响，那也无形中拯救很多人类啊、哦，这是我最高兴的地方。You out there watching this program, you're a little over one seven billionth of the population of the world. That's not so much, really. And yet, how each one of us lives makes a difference collectively. The change makers lead the way, changing our homes, changing our workplace, changing our light bulbs, changing the way we build and what we build with. We're all in this together, and with these projects and more, maybe we'll be able to do more than just survive upon this planet of ours. Maybe we will actually make our lives a great deal better.